It is the Anfield wrap after Liverpool have beaten Southampton by three goals to one. We are in association with Reds Bet. I hope you've been enjoying all of our Reds Bet work this week around Aintree. We were really pleased to do it and we're very, very pleased to be partnering with them as well. Big supporter of fan-related causes and fan media. Uh, we are pleased to be partnering with them as our lead sponsor for the whole of 2019. Uh, I have Philippa Smallwood, I have Steve Graves and I have John Gibbons to talk about Southampton 1, Liverpool 3. And Steve, Southampton 1, Liverpool 3 should, in a strange way, be something relatively mundane. And yet it appears to have become a cataclysmic event that we will be looking back on for the rest of our lives. That's certainly how I feel right now. Somehow, uh, until the next one, which will probably be next week. I don't want to <laughs> it's, it's mad. Liverpool, have, we did probably 20 to 25 games of looking really clinical, like a kind of title win inside. Uh, everything precise and, and sort of times and, and it just you know almost we were saying we weren't we weren't sort of dramatic enough and we weren't you know weren't fun enough really and now we've just gone absolutely wild and I don't really know what to do about it anymore. Um, the the circumstances it's like, it's like you just couldn't it's like we're creating a new a new challenge every week and overcoming it and the manager's almost setting himself his own problems and then overcoming them and you, and you sort of you don't even know what to think what to expect anymore and I think everybody would love a two 0 or a three 0 somewhere around the corner but then how can you not enjoy this as well you have to you have to just you have to just go this is this is what it is and, and there's just something there's something in the soul of this football club that makes these things happen and I don't even know what it is anymore it's, it's just wild <laughs> um, it was it was just anything but John I mean I've, I've literally I've written the agenda for the show number two Southampton 1 Liverpool 3 A open bracket fucking hell um, oh, close, sorry, close bracket fucking hell that's basically what I've that, that's how it feels that's how I feel currently about all of this while simultaneously feeling fabulous <laughs> well you went as well didn't you so you had so, sort of you know the, the emotions of the day and all that um, I'm not saying it was any kind of less or more nerve wracking watching it on telly or, or frustrated at times or exhilarating at other times but yeah you, you must kind of wonder what on earth's you know going on um, the <laughs> They're just a they're just a really good football team, I think, and I think, you know, if you you, you talk a lot about you know our feelings, and we're going to talk about our, a lot about our feelings, but imagine, you know, and then people talk about imagine being a Man City fan or something. I was just trying to imagine being a Southampton player and playing as well as they did and putting everything in that they did and going in at one all at half time, and that must have been really kind of tough to take really in terms of okay, in, in, in some ways they probably got more joy against Liverpool than they, than they thought they would, but. In other ways, you know, they put put in such a shift and played so well and scored a well worked goal from their point of view. Obviously, from our point of view, we could have done a lot better, but and then and then we just got our act together for a few minutes and got a goal. And that I mean, and it must be so tough to to play against you know, because you've got everything else, you know, all the other issues of kind of playing against Liverpool. And then we're just really good in both boxes at the at the moment. And I think you know the midfield was an issue last night, and it's been a bit of an issue on and off all season, really. Um, in, in kind of different ways. I mean, I mean, last night was it was was particularly problematic. But I think the midfield's generally been a bit a bit of an issue all season. But we've we've we found a way past that because, well, a lot of it because of Virgil Van Dijk in, in, being in, being in one box, and then also the fact that when we do get it together, we, we just we, we always manage to score. And even you know even even the Kaita one, you know, there's there's the Manny one kind of just before where he probably actually should score. Although headers are harder than you think. I learned this week. Yes. Uh, XG training. Um, headers harder than you think. But you know, he but he, but he he'll be disappointed anyway. So I think because this 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 team's just always got a goal in it. Occasionally out of nothing, and because we do, even when we kind of look a bit shambolic, kind of are able to kind of defend so well. The the, the those two things are just really really good and they're sort of the hardest thing to to buy or, or create from a football team and we've got it we have got it philippa um the other thing that we've got is a ton of resilience i think that this i think you can argue that liverpool's worst 10 minutes of the season is the first 10 minutes of the game against southampton i think you can possibly say that the second bet worst 10 minutes of the season certainly in the league is the second 10 minutes against southampton and i wasn't that convinced about the third 10 minutes either <laughs> but there is a uh there is a thing here where they were they were able to pull themselves back together. I think you know whether that's partially with half time, partially from the bench, but I just also think those players on the pitch. There's an unbelievable resilience and focus about them on the overall task. There just seems to be a bit of belief about them. Um, you know, I think they accept that games aren't going to be easy. You know, they're not just going to waltz over teams, and I think that's the way that the Premier League should be. That even a side that can potentially win the title 
has to grind it out and has to actually overcome obstacles. You know, last season when Man City did it, you know, part of me just thinks it shouldn't be that easy for a team. Shouldn't be that bloodless. Yeah, exactly. You know, the, there was just no fun in in that last season. You know, somebody just absolutely waltzing away with it. So I, I'm actually, <laughs> I hate it when the match is on. So like, apart from when it went to 3-1 last night, but afterwards, I'm absolutely loving this kind of, I don't know, full throttle, like up and down roller coaster ride that we're actually on this season. I, I'm I'm absolutely loving it, and I, obviously, I'll be absolutely gutted if it doesn't actually bear any fruit come the end of it. But this is what football's all about, you know. If you were just in it for silverware, then there'd be nobody going to the games unless your team was winning the title every single season you know you've got teams that are you know in the championship or whatever and their fans are still going week in week out because it is just about moments in your life and creating memories and we're making an awful lot of those at the minute there's big performances and big moments steve let's drill into the second actually let's let's talk about the most solid goal and I've just got this thing, I've watched it back, I think now nine million times. Um, <laughs> I've got this thing that I just think he's, on the halfway line, he knows what he wants to do. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing he ends up doing. And in many ways, that I've, I've watched Liverpool strikers go through bad, bad patches where the one thing you'd say they don't want is to carry the ball for 50 yards. Yeah. And it transpires that the thing that Mo Salah wanted more than anything to to to, to correct his current his current malaise was the opportunity to run at one defender for fifty yards and then stick it past a goalkeeper in the way he planned all along. Yeah, um, it's something you looked at the the YouTube videos when he when he arrived and you saw some of them Roma goals. It reminded me of more of them. Really, there was a, f- a couple of them where he was just seemingly on his own with with maybe one covering defender. Doesn't happen so much in in the Premier League, I don't think, or it certainly hasn't happened as much for Liverpool because the sides maybe been a little bit more packed than, than side, um, defensively than than they would be against um, against that Roma side. So you know he's added so many other things to his game, but it did feel like that was he is a rare instance of a footballer who who would dream of that situation to to get himself out of a rut. Um, he, you know he's he's got the option and an option that probably lots of us were were screaming for him to take, and it, and he's just so single minded. He's got no. No fear, no thought about what what's happened in the past. We've seen we've seen players, and and you know you don't need to name them because it's not it's no shame to 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 struggle with with taking that chance. Side players players take those chances much less than people actually think they do. Um, they're they're not easy, and it just made it look so simple from from a distance. The distance he hits it from is 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 mad as well. And it, on the on the on the telly initially, it almost looks deflected, and then you see that the, the um, he's not even sort of hammered it. He's just he's put, placed it. Um, where it where it needs to go, it's it's remarkable presence of mind and, and composure, and the two goals he scored amidst this whole drought, which is Bournemouth and this one, it, are are all of that. I like everything. Everything's there. It's not like he's he sort of scored a scruffy goal and, and got back on track through that. He's, he's shown the composure that we know he's got. So it's all back there, and you just feel like there's there's a massive run. I, I thought he was going to score again actually in the, in the game last night, and I think he'll definitely score in the next one. Um, it's big, big from Steve, but I'm I'm, I'm, I'm playing down a market. Well, it, no, it's it, it's funny though. The, the, at the interview straight after the game, where he immediately talks about it was his 50th goal for Liverpool, which suggests that it's that that's been weighing I on his we, mind we, I, rather than the mm. rather than the drought. Yeah, it's this 50 thing. We kind of talked about it for a while, and then when he didn't score, we were talking more about the the goals he wasn't scoring rather yeah. than that thing that was there. I think he does. He, he feels like he reads records and knows yeah. the records, and he's. He's got there to be the fastest still, which yeah. is mad when you think about how many games he's not scored. Yeah, yeah, and how many brilliant strikers so we've had. Like yeah. yeah, and so I think that has been like playing on his mind, which is, you know, I, I don't think anyone was expecting, but, you know, like a cricketer on 99 who suddenly starts yeah. doing strange things. I think there was like a, maybe a little bit of that for him. So, so I'm with Steve. I think, he, I think he's going to fly between now and the end of the season, no? He's also, it is the presence of mind. It's the little touch just before Philippa. There's lots of bits to this goal that make me think, yes, this is it, this is just just phenomenal football. And if anything, watching it back over and over, he almost places it too well. The keeper's nowhere near it. He's, he's done the keeper completely. The key, and uh, he, he puts it in the corner. No keeper in the world can stop it. But the keeper's worried he's going to go the other side. He's worried about Firmino. He's got lots and lots on his mind. The keeper's thinking about eight different things. And Mo Salah's thinking about one thing, which is I'm putting this ball in the bottom corner. Yeah, I think that's the thing that stands out to me, really, because you look at it, and I think Jamie Carragher uh, actually criticised the goalkeeping position last night, and 
I think that was a little bit harsh because, like you say, he's got to kind of get a look across a little bit to try and cut off that near post mm. option. He's got to get across a little bit in case he passes it to Firmino, which is what everybody expected him to do. And then he kind of like just leaves just enough space for Salah to be able to to get the ball between him and the post, and he he just does it perfectly. I. <sighs> It's, it's really strange, actually. I, I kind of feel like Salad almost doesn't get enough credit sometimes for, for the brilliance that he does. Um, I don't think that there's any other player that you would want on the ball in that situation. Um, and that's that's within the Premier League. You know, the only, the only player I can kind of put in the same sort of categories maybe Hazard, but then I don't think he has the consistency of what Salah does and he doesn't create as much for me uh for his teammates or doesn't work as well as in the system um as what as what Salah does with Firmino and Mane I actually think he's been playing really well uh without getting the goals he's actually been playing really well and it's just nice to have that kind of like monkey off his back like you say you know he's maybe been looking a little bit too much at the 50 goal mark and and hopefully now he'll relax a little bit and and like you say fly for the rest of the season um want to go back to the very start of this and John Southampton get to be good and I think that that's something which you know we were talking before the game in a number of different shows and I was I was a bit more concerned about Southampton for a couple of reasons and as we got close to the kickoff I felt more bullish but they it's good lager isn't it yeah they very much so <laughs> they uh, they were you know 20 since the managers that managers come in they played 16 24 points uh, which is akin to Wolves Watford sort of pace and it was a Wolves Watford sort of game that are proper side to be quite honest with you and they you know they are as they a lot of what Wolves and Watford do to you make it really hard to play pressure smartly intelligently be well set up you know I they do get to be good is what I'm saying and they demonstrated I think that they are yeah, I think the, you know the, the the manager seems quite impressive, and and he seems to be getting more out of them. Certainly, what what the Mark Hughes was. I mean, the, the numbers you know show that in itself. But in terms of, I, I think they looked like they were they relished the task last night. They looked like a team who had a degree of safety, but I think obviously knew knew how big a, a, either a point or, or three points would would be for the for their season. And yeah, they, they, they looked they got good players and they were brave. Um, you know, maybe if you know the, after the goal there was a little bit too much of a gap between kind of Shane Long and everyone else. You know, at, at times, but but then you kind of understand that as well because they're playing against an, an exceptional side. And so, yeah, I thought you know they've got good players, they've got good technical players, they've got good battlers as well. The two lads in centre midfield, I thought, with excellence. And I think you know they, they had a they had a bit of a plan about how they, how to get a goal as well and I think that's something we might have to start watching out for as well because there's been a few times I think where I wouldn't say we could see that similar goals but I think there's a bit of a thing where managers go you're not going to get loads of opportunities against Liverpool so when you get chance to, when you get chance to get men in the box get get loads and I think that there was a bit, a bit of that of the, the goals we conceded uh, against Man United at home and Arsenal at home, where they all suddenly just flood the box because they think there's, there's not going to be that many of these. I think there's part of that. And I think as well also, if there's four of us here, then Virgil van Dijk can't mark us all. And one of us might be able to confuse him and pull us into an area, into an area where he doesn't want to go. And maybe the midfield aren't, aren't as good as Trahan as they should be. And, and I think I think that sort of happened with their goal, which I think is something that we're, we're going to have to watch out for because, as I say, although I haven't seen that goal yet this season, I think I have seen a few similar where suddenly, you know, there's an extra man in the box. And well, did, did he get another? Goal. Yeah. Shane Long nearly gets another. Uh, yeah, in, that's in, from a mistake. In, in a similar, in a similarish area, though, I'd say, yeah. you know, that sort of that sort of channel there, uh, Steve. I think John's got a good point. It feels like when City for example, are conceding to sides like Palace. I mean, maybe I'm taking the sort of Townsend goal out of con, but they're, they're conceding from distance. Yeah. Wonder, a lot of ours have been inside the box, you know, Cardiff at home, obviously more of for Spurs just last game. Yeah. Um, bits Some and pieces one, yeah. in the box where the, the ball comes down and, and maybe we're a little bit slow to react at times. I think, you know, that there's a fair there's a fair point there. Um, a couple of times we've been maybe so focused on a ball coming in, we've not focused on the second ball and, and picking up those bits. Uh, maybe that's something that, that that's a little bit personnel and a little bit um, affected by circumstances. But um, I don't know if you, you sort of think about maybe stopping that supply at times is is going to be a part of addressing it. Uh, 
and a big part of it is just going to be scoring more because <laughs> no, again it's another game where nobody scored more than one against Liverpool yeah. and, it, and it, it's still incredibly hard to do and provided Liverpool are able to find their way to, to three goals in a game they're, they're pretty much home and dry and that's got to be the, the way to look at it from now for the next few games because it feels like sorting that systemic issue might be a thing for, for the summer really uh, there's something Steve in the other thing that happens to Southampton is they punch themselves out and, completely and I think you can see you know you can see <laughs> You can see the benefits uh, from a Liverpool point of view of Mark Hughes pre-season in a strange sense. You know, they're, they're nowhere near as fit as that manager will want them to be given what he's asking them to do. He must be uh, wanting a bit more from that. But I think that is part of how Liverpool are able. I think Liverpool are able in some of these games and some tricky moments when we talk about their resilience. I think they're able to hang in off the basis, off the premise that these are going to tire. They're going to tie before our eyes and we will be physically stronger as this wears on. And I think they've, almost, they've just got that knowledge in the locker and that's one of the reasons why they're able to, to see themselves through difficult periods because they know an easier period will come. Yeah, and, and, and the manager, I think, is a believer in it. You know, there's, there's 90 plus minutes in a game and, and you see he, he often gets criticised for making his changes late. He makes them earlier last night and um, and rightly so. But, um, you know, for, for making changes too late and I think he... he He's happier working in small, smaller pockets of time than maybe we are as fans because once you start looking at the clock and it says like 78, you start panicking. Um, whereas I think the manager and, and he's imbued that in the squad is saying that that's, that's 12 to 16 minutes probably in which you could probably get two or three goals if, you, if you're as good as, you, as we know we are. Um, so yeah, you, using all of that, that time that's in the game is something that Liverpool, I think, have... have have been excellent at throughout his throughout his time with us really um, aside from all of the other things that have changed that's been quite a constant and it feels like we've been able to to score late in games and, and we've seen sides tire against us all season um, I'm sure we're going to come on to the midfield and it's obviously a factor I think in in in, in what is what is, what changes what turns around um, for us in midfield is that the, the personnel who come on who change the game are are helped by the fact that Southampton have dropped such a dropped off such a cliff really um, we will come on to talk about that. The the thing to to, to point out is uh, Philippa for their goal. At least no Liverpool player is doing particularly well. Um, I think it's one. I think that there's all there is a. The, I think we're all guilty of a goal goes in and you want to go. Whose fault is that? Uh, that's something that we, that is a football thing. And occasionally there is an answer. On this one, I think that you, there's probably there's probably six of them to blame, and I'm, I think I'm partially culpable as well. Um, <laughs> there is, you know, you're just sort of looking at it, and everyone's just not where they should be. Everyone's not doing what they should be doing. There isn't any one of them where you go, you know, I, I don't think Virgil's great. I think Hoiberg does them all ends up, to be fair. Mm. Um, I, th- I think Robertson's knocked off. I don't like any, anything that Matip's doing. I'm not happy about Alexander-Arnold. I've got no idea where the midfield is. It is just one of them, isn't it, where everyone's just not right. I literally look straight at... Uh, like when you're watching it back on the replays and you're just going, where is everybody? <laughs> yeah. How has that been allowed to happen? Like who's allowed, you know, midfielders just to run into the box without anybody anywhere near them? How have they been able to cross the ball and it like basically end up with just Robertson with two guys there that he's got to try and take care of? Um, it was just a mess, to be honest. Um, but, you know, credit to them because... I mean, I was losing everything in in, in that moment. I was just like, how could, you know, I, they were just a mess as well after the goal. And I just thought, how do, how do you turn that around? You know, for that, like you said earlier, you know, the first 30 minutes were probably the poorest 30 minutes that we've played this season. And I just couldn't see how you turn that around, how you actually settle it all down without making changes. But then you kind of think to yourself, well, if we're needing a goal, like in the 80th minute and you're bringing on midfielders, just to try and shore it up a little bit, how's that going to help you later on in the game? Um, so I think I think Klopp did well to hold his nerve a little bit. I think the players did well to kind of get a grip more after 30 minutes and then obviously score the goal. Um, and then get into half-time without having any more damage being done, really. I think the talk about the goal and then talk about the lack of scares up to the break John the goal is it's a really really good header and it's just from it's just from working them it, it is as simple as Liverpool just work Southampton over and over for the first time properly in the game really they, 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 they ask Southampton a few questions and finally the opportunity comes from it yeah yeah I think so I think you know there's the Manny one obviously just before but I think that's sort of a little bit almost a little bit out of nothing isn't it this one is is more kind of building pressure we've seen it a couple of times recently actually where crosses coming in from from left and then suddenly right and and 
I think if you can do that, then the team's the team's not quite set, and they, and they never really kind of got 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 themselves sorted out in the kind of way they wanted to be. Really, we were able to take advantage of it. Obviously, there's a bit of fortune in that it comes off the lads' back, and then um, you know, sort of bounces around. Um, I was I thought it was funny on the post match show where we were talking about the fact that. It, you didn't look in from from where you were. Absolutely not. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you could tell it. Was, to be fair, on the ten, you could tell it was in straight away. Like it's it's kind of well over the line. I literally and... celebrated the keeper. The got the sorry, the referee giving it. <laughs> <laughs> that, my trigger, my trigger yeah. for celebrating was the referees giving it. Mm. And it's a nice moment for Kaiser, isn't it? And he gets. I don't think. I mean, I was going to say I don't think he'll start again, but I said I said he, he wouldn't start again this season before the, before the game, and then he's thrown in. But you know, he, he's unlikely to. I think really, unless there's you know there's there's kind of more injuries and stuff. But he gets his nice moment now, doesn't he? In in, in a kind of big game and, and and kind of gets get gets his goal, and and I think. You know, it was it was important not to go in one 0 at half time. I think I'm not saying we wouldn't have been able to come back and, and win the game if we if we hadn't, because you know this team's capable of doing anything seemingly. But I think going in at one one was important for us and important, as I say, as a, as a bit of a kind of blow to them really because they had played so well and put and put so much in and, and we're still going in level. Uh, I was subbing him uh, as he scores, Steve. I was subbing everyone. Uh, there was no end to the list of people I was subbing um, at half time. He's got to change this. He's got to change this. He's got to change this. Other referees giving it. It is. Um, it felt significant for him, and I actually think his performance over the, the whole of the ninety. We'll come on to talk about the subs in a minute, but over the whole of the ninety from that point, so the, the, the following hour, I think his performance was, was was good, and I think a goal does make a difference to a footballer. Yeah, I mean, I think the whole night. <laughs> brings him back to being a viable option off the bench or if something different is, is sort of needed. Um, I think the fact that he's sort of, the, the whole the whole midfield is, is individually and collectively just doesn't really hang together. Um, he's probably the least to blame for that, I think, um, if if blame is what, what we're, you know, the most to blame, I suppose, is, is the person he picks them. I think that, and I think, <laughs> I think that's that's what the manager himself, you know, would would say. And I think, you know, that they've they've not played together much, and it looked like it, and that's fine because that's what it's meant to look like. But it was, in in retrospect, and at the time, it felt felt like a gamble that um, I was I was skeptical of. I would say, um, his is it? Yeah, individually, I think he, he improved after the goal. Um, I think you can see, and you can see this with all of them, the the affection they've got for one another, and the sort of how happy they are for each other to have scored. Everybody was so delighted. You know, Salah, I think, gave Henderson a kiss, uh, which I really enjoyed. Um, they're all so pleased for each other, even the ones who... Th- there's no sense, I don't think, that... There's a few times when you see Van Dijk uh, and Matip, to be fair, having to do things that Keita probably should have dealt with and having to deal with them. And there's not a sense that they're turning around and going for fuck's sake. I think there's a, there's a general understanding. Perhaps because some of these players have had journeys, they've had... Virgil van Dijk hasn't been the best player in the world all his life um, well he probably has but he hasn't been recognised <laughs> he's, no Cel- he's been playing for Celtic or he's been playing at Southampton and he's had to come away from where he was um, you know you look at his international appearances and it's like ridiculously small number yeah. um, when you think of what, what footballer he is and the age he's at now um, they've all you know all in different ways really have had disappointments or setbacks or question marks around them and I think they all understand what it is to be in that position um, so whether Naby Keita comes to be a fully fledged Liverpool player. I'm, I'm still. I, the jury has to be out, and I think there's a lot of people who, based on not much evidence, are happy to go one way or the other with it. And I think that we just have to um, wait and see and put our faith in the fact so, that that he, he's he's a good footballer. He, he's he's got an awful lot to offer. He just might not have to be this season, which is a great position to be in. Uh, someone who the jury is most definitely not out on, but may well be for his involvement between now and the end of the campaign. Steve is is Wijnaldum. It's. Mm-hmm. It's been a growing concern. I think going into sort of mid February onwards, I think he's he's excellent away at Bayern Munich. Uh, but apart from that, that's probably the only game of the last five six you'd say he was excellent in. Yeah. There is a there is a, there is a bit of a worry around him. I think I think of all of them as they come off the pitch last night. The one who's the one who you've probably got the greatest concerns about in terms of how much he can c- contribute and what he will contribute for the rest of the season is Wijnaldum. Adam. He's, 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 he's resurged before, but it, it looks, at the minute, it all looks hard for him. Yeah, it, it looks a little bit less strong somehow, and I don't know if there's been something that's, that's you know, if you like, I, I think there's been a little bit of illness in there as well as injury, I'm not sure, but yeah, I know there was illness going around yeah. the camp at one point, wasn't there? And you know when you're like, if you've ever tried to go to the gym when you're ill? And it's not just doesn't work for you, does it? I think there's d- d- looks a little bit of that sort of sort of bullish strength that he had, the ability to shrug people off is is not quite there, and his and his little sort of half a yard of 
getting into sp- I mean, th- these are the things he massively relies on you know he's not um he's not got an in- amazing range of long passing he's not someone who can who can dribble past people necessarily or he can work in tight spaces but he's not he's not you know a, a, a sort of messy or an who can sort of burst into space like that it's just not the player he is and the things that he really needs to get his game going just seem to not quite be there at the minute it's interesting because i think we've we've seen this from a way off i think the manager sort of hinted at it as well and I suppose you never know. Is it that he needs three weeks sat on a beach, or is it that he just needs to keep playing? I, you don't know. I suppose what what is it? Fitness? Is it sharpness? What are those? What's the difference between those two things? It feels like the manager feels like he needs to keep playing because he has kept playing him. Yeah. So maybe that's maybe he's right. <laughs> but I think I really want him in a in a, in a Champions League semi final. Should we should we get one? Um, should we be going to Barcelona? I want him to be there, but I want him to be at his best, and that's my main worry. Really, he might just need a week off. Yeah. And, yeah. and it might it might just be kind of as simple as that. Really, you look at that Porto at home game and think, do you really need one? Just Ronaldo need a kind and injury. That? And you know, is 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 you know, I'm, I'm not I'm not sort of disparaging Porto, but I think you know, you if you're picking a midfield for that, you can you can pick one fair, perfectly fine with without kind of Ronaldo in it, and then and then see where you are at Chelsea, and maybe even kind of consider kind of giving him, him, him that off as well and, and, then, and, then, and then see where you are after that he's played so well and he's played so if you look at the, the minutes you know he's, he's put in it's, it's, and he's been a real warrior and the fact that he's you know can play in different positions understand different positions understand different kind of game situations just makes him such an asset to Jürgen Klopp that I understand why he has played him so much it just sort of looked a bit like it last night and he, he should have been the one really to kind of to help out the other two in in, the, in different ways, you know, and, and he wasn't able to last night, and that and that was a real shame, and that's where, you know, I sort of feel a bit sorry for for, for Kate and to a lesser extent for being out in, in that, you know, that you know, Kate is probably looking at that midfield and going, well, I know what he does, I know what he does, and I'm just I just get to put the icing on the cake, and then them two lads aren't doing anything, of <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, oh, I'm gone, <laughs> you know, and stuff like that. And that's not to say that he shouldn't still be looking to track people and tackle people, but I think you know it is kind of you know it, it does it does make it tricky for him. And, and one thing that when Alden does when he's at his best is not just be brilliant to himself, but but make everyone else's life kind of much easier and. I, I don't know. I think I think I think there's there's, a, there's another act to to be played in, in the Genie Ronaldo season. Um, it's just maybe not not for the next week or so. I'd agree with that. I think um, this is kind of like where you benefit from having six or seven good quality midfielders to to choose from. You know, you you're going to need everybody at some point of the season, and it's all right. You know, winaldon has been never reliable, uh, like you say, up until February probably, and like now he's he's starting to flag a little bit and it's time for somebody else to come in and step up and that's why you have so many quality players in there um you know i i quite openly would be really happy no matter which three midfielders start out of the seven um i've not really got any particular preference i trust Klopp in whatever he decides to do i think he got it wrong last weekend i think he got it wrong last night but at the end of the day we've come out with three points and you can't really argue with that he's we kind of get a little bit obsessed that the starting 11 have to be spot on but sometimes you know the substitutes come into it and it's a very valid tactic to sometimes go right what difference can we make coming on off the bench and I think as fans it's difficult to kind of like get to 60 70 minutes and not be winning the game but it is very valid that you'll have somebody come in off the bench and and change the game and actually pull it back into your favour. Okay, Uh, we're going to chat about the bench, the subs that get made in a second or two, but before then, me and John are going to have a chat about our app. We took advice uh, around all of this. You had a chat with uh, with Chris from Redmen, because we all get on, we're all mates. (laughs) And when you had your chat with Chris, Chris said, keep telling them what you're doing when you change things. And when you think you've told them and you think you've told everybody, tell them all again. And this is a grand example of telling them all again. Yeah, uh, from between now and when we do launch the app in mid-April, um, which is you know soon, yeah, but yeah, far away. Um, I'd say it's probably tomorrow when it's <laughs> happening. Then, uh, but mid-April covers a multitude of sins. Uh, between now and when we do we do launch the app, uh, we're going to be talking about it as much as we can because we know people don't listen to everything, and we know sometimes we leave little bits out, so then you then you message us about them, and then we go, oh yeah, maybe should have said that as well. So yeah, we're going to be trying to do as many of these as we can, just so hopefully between all of them, we'll cover all the information that that you need going forward. 
Indeed, indeed. So the first and most important thing is is that we are getting an Anfield app app built. Um, it should be finished, as John said, mid-April. And then we want everyone to download it, whether or not you only listen to the free show, whether or not you subscribe. We want you to see the app as the best place to get your Anfield rap content, whether it's writing, whether it's video, or whether it's audio like this. It will be the best place to do it. Um, that is, that's the, been the purpose of the enterprise. And we hope that if at the minute you're someone who doesn't watch much video but listens, that you'll start to watch some video. If you're someone who likes the writing on the website but doesn't always listen, uh, that maybe you'll start doing that. I mean, that is part of what we've, what we've done this for, to be quite honest with you. We want to make it as easy as possible to access everything that we do because we're proud of everything that we do. Yeah, we are proud of everything we do. And obviously, you know, the easiest thing in the world would, would be to carry on being a, being a sort of a podcast company, an audio company. But, you know, we, we want to do different things we want to tell stories in different ways and we know that the people out there enjoy kind of consuming media if you like in different ways as well so so that's what we want to do and have everything in one place you know and make it a lot easier for you really to kind of to access that we're really proud of the right and we know for some people going onto the website isn't, isn't something they do regularly but you know for example if, if the right is just to click away on the app that you want already then you might go on there and, and see the fact that we've got daily columns on there we've got loads of people writing really good stuff and, and the post match stuff as well so I mean my ideal is that we get to a situation where you guys kind of wake up in the morning and think oh what are the Anfield apps saying and there'll always be something there wow imagine it um, <laughs> imagine such a thing uh, we are shifting the pricing points for this so if you currently do subscribe to all of our audio uh, you pay £5 a month that's going to shift to 7 for all audio we're keeping a skeleton service on um, for people who, who, who just want some Anfield rap but um, don't want to commit to the full package and that will remain at £5 that will be about to show a day uh, as it comes through uh, the Friday show and AFQ will be on there uh, the review and the post-match show slash pink won't uh, just making that clear now uh, for anyone listening uh, also um, the video that we've been doing with the exception of Talking Reds and on this day so post-match pints second look uh, preview and now the stat show that will also become something that uh, people need to pay for you need to subscribe for all audio will be seven pounds all video will be seven pounds both will be ten we are a business at the Anfield Wrap and we would obviously like you to pay £10, but also we like you to pay £10 because we do think that the content does all complement each other. If you were to get the video uh, in there, you will be able to listen to the video um, whilst doing other things if you choose to do that. We are of the view that we do our video because we want you to watch it. We think it looks good. We work hard on having it look good. Um, and when we're doing stuff like the stats stuff, we want to be able to detail that for you. Uh, we're pleased on that to be working with Stats Bomb. We had them in this week, John, and we think that the possibilities for it are almost endless for us. Yeah, I'm excited about the stats stuff. Yeah, probably more so than I thought it'd be, if I'm honest. Um, it sort of completely changed my column I did on Wednesday about Mo Salah, about kind of looking into things about how his game had changed during the goal droughts and stuff like that. So it's a really powerful tool. It's really kind of simple to to use and get your head around and stuff like that. And and just kind of, it's nice to go, I think this ha- is, is right about football. Um, can I find any evidence and kind of looking into it? And sometimes, you know, you you see that, that maybe maybe you're wrong and sometimes you, you, you see stats to kind of to kind of back up what you what you were thinking, and so I think the stat shows have been really good. I think they look terrific. I think Sam has done a great job with kind of how they look, and obviously Neil fronting them too. So it's just an example of what we want to do more of. And as a business, we don't want to sit still. We don't want to you know just be you know churning out the, the, the same shows in kind of three four years time. We want to be ambitious. We we know that you guys want us to kind of push boundaries of, of what's possible in fan media as well so this is just going to allow us to do that by paying a little bit more um, hopefully it won't much too, matter too much to you but but for us it's it's that bit more money to to get a bigger video team to to be more ambitious in terms of our audio quality and also kind of what we're doing to tell longest form stories stuff like the moments in time stuff and stuff like that to do more of that and as I say just kind of like surprise people with what fan media is capable of uh, Indeed we are telling the story of supporting Liverpool from the heart of the city we're very pleased you've been on that journey with us uh, we see it as one that is ongoing and one which will continue to evolve and improve if you've got any questions you know where we are uh, both personally feel free to get on me on Twitter to be quite honest with you uh, or uh, in other areas uh, you can email us and there's the Facebook subscriber group and there's the newsletters and you can apply to them as well and people will pick them up uh, thank you for listening to this let's get back over to talking about the fact that Liverpool are top of the league and it's boss Welcome back after all that. I hope we talked a lot of sense, John. Uh, we haven't got it yet. Uh, we'll find <laughs> oh, out. I thought you were brilliant. Thanks, mate. Uh, there is Steve, the subs then. Um, Southampton have another flurry. And I think before we get into the how well both Milner and Henderson do, because I don't think that's an arguable point, it is worth pointing out that the manager after uh, Fabinho comes on and does very well against Tottenham, he is at pains to say, well, yeah, he's come on against yeah. Sky midfielders. And I do think that Southampton are... 
close to being done around the moment that Milner and Henderson come on. But it is interesting that they, they, they go early, like you said before, and it was off the back of a series of conferences with Pepe Linz as well, from what I could see. Mm. And then those players genuinely come on and impress. Yeah, I mean, it's completely fair to, to to sort of bring that in, you know, as someone who sort of frequently finds himself arguing for Jordan Henderson. I think it's, it's only fair to say that, that that was, you know, something that people were perfectly able to say about Fabinho in his last game. Um, the manager, yeah, it, Philip has t- touched on this, you know, he... He chooses to take away some options from himself because he we know he loves to do what he does do, which is the, the extra centre back, um, if we are winning the game. So in his ideal world we're gonna be we're gonna be two one up uh with you know five to go. He'd love to have he wants to have that centre back to bring on. That's almost like a change that's that's pretty much re- when you're one nil down uh, sorry, when you're one each as we are at that point, that's a change that you're almost like he's gonna have to keep for himself anyway, because he just likes to do it. Um people always seem to be slightly surprised by it like when they see like Matip or Clavin or someone coming on it's like he does it every time <laughs> um, but then so then to do Henderson Milner you are almost completely shutting off the prospect of for example Shakiri, um to, to to try and come on and change that game um, which is the obvious thing I suppose that you or I would do um, is go who may attack in players um, it'd be interesting to know what what you know, if he'd had a couple of other different options available, whether he'd have taken a different choice. But I think it, there was a lot of conversation. I wouldn't be amazingly surprised if Jurgen Klopp had it started from a different position to Pep Linders and Pep Linders maybe um, brought him slightly, slightly closer to his own position. I think that would be um, not not impossible to imagine that that's how it worked. Uh, like when me I and think, you, DJ. Sorry? Like when me and you, Exactly, DJ. like when me and you. <laughs> um, I think Jordan Henderson himself had a bit of an involvement in that. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if James Mill, you know, if at half time as well. I mean, Henderson um, warmed up quite extensively at half time I think so there was um, there was obviously a bit of a plan there um, sometimes you know you look amazing you look like a lucky general at times when when the plans like that do come off and, and um, there's an element of that but it, it just it's just tremendous to, to see two players come on um, make such a difference I mean Henderson in particular but I think Milner's worth worth remembering as well that he, he, he performs he kind of just a different way of playing that right back role Um and obviously in just such a, a, a different situation to when we saw him at Old Trafford and all sort of kind of wrote it off. It's, it's such a different challenge and a, um, a different thing that you have to do when you're in, in a game that, like the one he came into last night. So um, so all credit to, to kind of everybody involved. Um, I don't think it it's like serves as some kind of final judgment on anyone else. I think that all of them, all of the footballers involved in Liverpool's midfield last night have got roles to play. It just, it was so so chaotic for so long and then it just became so composed that it, it's hard not to, to sort of see that contrast um, and and sort of see that, you know, that there are some probably some lessons to take forward there. Everyone, I thought, Philip, but everyone, I thought I think Fabinho was great from the minute Henderson comes on. Uh, I think he's really, really involved. He's really dynamic. Uh, he's really, he, he just looks more at ease with everything yeah. that's around him from that moment. There's a real, I think that Milner's just opens up that flank which stretches Southampton some more. But there was a real sort of sense of mission about the pair of them, which sometimes you don't get from substitutes. Sometimes substitutes, any substitute, sometimes takes 15 minutes to try to work out what the purpose is. They both knew exactly what the purpose was from the minute they stepped onto the pitch. I think it purely boils down to experience. You know, both those players have played for us for quite a while now. They understand exactly what Klopp wants them to do. Um, I thought just the impact that they both had just on the rest of the players on the pitch, like you mentioned Fabinho there, but even like the back line, Matip just looked a little bit more assured, like he had a little bit more help in a sense. Um, And it's no slight on Trent. I think Trent's an absolutely fantastic footballer, but we need to remember he's only 20. He hasn't been there. He hasn't done very much. Just having somebody in there who's, I don't know, senses things a little bit more, I think he's... The way I saw it last night, um, you know, Milner just had this real sense of like what the danger was, but also how to exploit their weaknesses on that right hand side. Um, I just, it's it's funny, really. I with Henderson, I mean, I'm one of his biggest fans. I actually think he's he's one of the most underrated footballers to actually be able to go on a football pitch and play exactly where the manager wants you to play, despite, and he even said after last night's game, it's not really where he wants to play as a holding midfielder. He would rather play a bit further forward. But to sacrifice yourself for a club to get 
the best that the club can possibly achieve, I think speaks volumes of of him as a person. And I think that comes across and I think you see the respect that all the other players have for him, the fact that when he scores that goal, absolutely everybody's made up for him. And I think it's it's difficult to not recognise what impact he has on everybody else. And I think that's what's massively important as well, both on the pitch and off the pitch. He looked like he was enjoying, as I said there, I think Fabinho improves when Henderson comes on, John. But I think that I got the impression Henderson enjoyed knowing that Fabinho was there and enjoyed knowing that he had a a little bit more of a roving brief, that he was, for instance, not just because he scores, but that he's able to make that run into the box. He made two or three of them quite early after coming on, as if to say to Southampton, you've got me to deal with now as well. I'm going to be be coming and getting stuck in in these areas too. And it it, it was an excellent substitute performance. Yeah, it was. Uh, and it was, again, interesting hearing Henderson talking after the game, saying he's been talking to Klopp about maybe a slight change in his role and about, you know, further forward and how he could impact and, and what he could do. And it was interesting, you know, that they were there talking about that, maybe with the idea of him and Fabinho playing more in the same team together. I'd like to see it. I think the... I think the two of them do well together. I think this isn't the first time. I think Fabinho has looked a lot better when Henderson has been there and vice versa. And if you're talking about him in field, that too often this season generally and last night especially have looked a bit less than the sum of the parts. I think to have two fellas who, whose game I think increases when the other one's there, I think I'd like to see a lot more of that between now and the end of the season. And then, and then you pick your third one based on well, well, whatever you want, you know what I mean, like your form or or, or, or kind of the opposition or or balance or things like that. I think, I think that yeah, as I say, that they improve each other's game. I think Fabinho feels a lot better and understands a lot more about what he, what you know, and it brings out the kind of best in him. I think Henderson enjoys a bit more of a license, but knows that maybe he, he needs to do a bit of the legwork back there as well because Fabinho isn't maybe the always the one to kind of track and stuff like that. And you know, although he wins a lot of ball when it's in front of him. I think you know when it's sort of slightly behind him, he, he, he kind of he struggles a little bit, and so yeah, I think uh, I think I want to see much more of the two of them. I, th- I think you know Roma play them both, play another fella, and and also I think it showed. I was a little bit surprised he leaves Henderson and Milner both of them out, and I don't think he'll do that again. In that it, it's a captain and vice captain as well, the captain and vice captain of the football club, and and that's kind of for a reason really, and I think. You know, if they're getting left out, then, then you know they need to look at themselves as much as anyone because you know Henderson has been hot and cold this season, as is James Milner, and so I'm not sort of having a go at the manager because I think if you if you are left out of, out of a football team, then then kind of look at yourself first. But but I think I just. <laughs> I just thought they'd have sorted it out early if one of them would have been on the pitch. And so we have a bit of bad first 10, and then it turns to 20, as you say, then it turns to a 30. I just reckon if one of them would have been on there, it would have took less time yeah. to kind of sort that out, really. And there was, it's, it's a quiet midfield free ends up going with, you know, they're, they're not they're not sort of big shouters and things. And I'm not the shouting to be all and end all, but I've, I've never known Virgil van Dijk shout what the fuck is going on as much as he did last night and you might not have been able to see that Neil no, no, there's no. a lot of the camera <laughs> really? going to Virgil and Virgil going what the fuck is you know like that one the, the one where he nearly scores an own goal and yeah. stuff like that because because you know long misses it and and you know and he was he was he was in his he was in his rights to ask it I think <laughs> um, and I think I think um, you know if as I say if we'd have had it grown up in the midfield kind of earlier on I just not that I think they're necessarily better players or whatever. I just think I just think they've got a grip of it quicker. So I think you know if my predictions are worth anything after after earlier in the week, I think I, I, I think you'll see a lot more of Henderson for being as a two between now and the end of the season. And I'd be shocked if he leaves them both on the bench from the start again. Um, on Milner, the Henderson and Milner, man. Yeah, no, no. On Milner, um, Steve, you mentioned before about the way he plays that position differently. There was just lots of lovely little balls into the box that must be horrendous to have to deal with. I mean, they're horrendous to have to deal with whoever you're up against, but if it's if the little balls into the penalty area, those strange little angles he manages to find mm-hmm. are for Firmino and for for Firmino and Salah, then it's, it's even worse to suddenly be in that Southampton defence and think, firstly, well, why are we giving this lad 20 yards of room? It's because other people are making the decision that they can't get out to him. So we've got all this room and then... Who's tracking all of this? And I, I, I just thought it, it, there was genuine panic on that side of the pitch. Then, of, of, of right in front of us, where we were, where you could see that Southampton were like, so we can't, we just couldn't deal with it. They couldn't get a plan together. Yeah, his, his quality there gets you those touches in the area, which 
a rare, you know, rarer than people think the amount of times you actually do get to touch the ball in the area. And when it is the three that we've got, um, particularly the two, because I think Mane was playing much more outside the area um, and much wider than um, than than he does sometimes. And, and I thought he played very well, um, particularly second half. Um, but you know, when when you've got Firmino, Salah in the area, even when they're they've got men around them, even when they've got the back to goal, it, it, these are situations that they can thrive in. And you know, you, you almost see Firmino sort his feet out on one occasion. Little little moments when Liverpool are, are, are really threatening, um, without quite threatening. You know, the, the sort of chance before the chance um, coming through. Milner, I think you've said it before. You know, you forget he was a kind of flying winger um, at sixteen, and and you know the youngest player in the league or whatever he was, and. He's got that experience of having played pretty much everywhere, and if he was maybe two inches taller, he'd probably play centre half quite quite a bit as well. Um, he, he can bring all of that knowledge. He, he kind of plays right back as a midfielder, but with a little bit of that winger's knowledge. We saw it at, um, at West Ham when he creates the goal, and um, all kind you know all, all 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 kinds of little strings to his bow. And as long as his legs hold out, I think he's such a such an important part of this team and this squad. Um, I think that midfield for Porto you could you could get really quite excited really and I think it's probably not a word people would use about about them that much, but about him with Fabinho and Henderson, I could see Milner I think caused him a lot of problems um away from home last season. He pressed them really high. He um, presumably gonna the, play left back at the with that he? chance, doesn't he? That's that's true. I hadn't thought of that. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's quite good. Yeah. No, Get that's not a bad thing. Yeah, but it, it just leaves you with a sort of open question about the the third midfielder, doesn't it? And John said that you you pick them two plus one. Your plus one can be Origi, and you can make you can make something work around that. Your plus one can be Shakiri potentially yeah. if if he does see him coming back you in. Could move Lallana. Firmino further back as well. Yeah, completely. Well, yeah, exactly. You could do that. So it, it, it gives you the sort of the the two sixes, if you like, gives you the the platform to to. To then maybe go for a, something a little bit more like a ten um, around them, you know, I think Lallana's going to have a big role to play, provided he's um, he's able to fitness wise. You you all talked about in different ways, different moments, celebrations, the players coming together. John, I think there's we talk a lot about winning the league. Uh, we talk a lot about winning the league on shows. We talk a lot about winning the league outside of shows. We talk a lot about winning the league when we're dreaming. We talk to ourselves <laughs> a lot about winning the league, and I but I think that they are the, the, in the best possible way. Klopp has got them absolutely embedded in what this means, and they've got themselves embedded in what this means. Where you know you talk about Van Dijk, you talk about Milner, you talk about Salah, and looking at record books, you talk about Henderson. They look to me like they are they're as committed to this as we are, and trust me, we are pretty committed. Yeah, well, of course. Well, they've got their own careers and their own aspirations and things that they want to see at the end of their career. That you know, I had a good time. I, I, I enjoyed my football. I made a lot of money, but also I won this, 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 and this. And and that's you know important to footballers. And and they've chosen Liverpool as the place that they think that they can do that. And a lot of the, uh, had other options. And so, you know, they they they'll, they'll know what a great opportunity they'll this is, and they'll know that you know, you know. Although we hope that this is just the start of something, you know. Who's to say we will be on this many points going into kind of next season, and and you know who's to used to kind of presume that it that it's going to get any easier to win league titles because it because it might not um, at least until Pep finds something else to do, and so I think you know they they'll know that this is a great position they'll they'll know that we're in a really good moment um, to use a, a kind of a manager is in there and they'll, they'll know that it's it's all set up for us to do really well we're down to five games left in the league you know Champions League quarter final it's a nice draw yeah that they're, they're going to take some beating but it's undoubtedly a nice, nice draw it's a team these lads have beaten before you know save one or two kind of new players and so so the, they this is what they're in it for as much as we, this is what we're in it for you know Philip talks about you know before about the joys of being a football fan, you know, this is this is why you you flog yourself in the summer in America mm-hmm. when it's dead hot and you know you 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 you're retired from flying and 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 the lads have had you meeting standard charter for breakfast and now you you know you're doing three sessions a day and you know you've you, you know this is this is this is what they do that work for and that's what they tell them don't they that's what they say they say this you know you you work now for April you work now for May and so and so they they'll be feeling good they'll be feeling excited they'll be feeling determined and. They can do it. They, they can win both of them. You know what I mean. That is there for them. I'm not saying they necessarily will, but they, but they can do it. And yeah, what a, what a time you know to to, to be to be a, a footballer for them because they've all had it worse, as Steve said. There's something in the manager afterwards says it's whether our performances are on top level. He says it's really about fighting at this point. Uh, people want us to play like City. Um, we're not able to do that. Why should we do it? We have our way to play football. It's a nice way and a really good way. 
this is you mentioned before, Philip, about him embracing them, embracing the sort of imperfections that they have, and they are they aren't like City. This if City win this league, you know, for me, City's most impressive performance will end up being the one against us because it's where they showed the most grit and where they absolutely sort of dug mm. in in a way that they very rarely get asked to do. Uh, Liverpool at this point in time, a lot of this has been and has been for a while about digging in. There is something about the character, the resilience, the bottle of this side that's actually brought them to this point as much as the fact that the quality is there as well. It's interesting, isn't it? Because a lot of this season, people have talked about Liverpool losing the bottle and, you know, not being there, you know, when it counts. And that is pretty much what this whole side has been based on. Um, it was funny because last night when um, when Henderson scored and he's celebrating like that, and I, it made me think about 13-14. And as much as we go on about Gerard's slip and how that, potentially cost us the league Henderson when he got sent off against Man City that'll be in his mind as well and he'll possibly feel like he potentially cost us the league that season and I think a lot of this could be about redemption for him for a lot of the players for all different things throughout their careers Um, as we talked about you know I don't think we've got a perfect player within our squad Um, I think that there's a a lot of players who have quite a lot to prove and I think that it's a team that is together. It is the best team that I've ever seen. Um, but as individuals, you probably wouldn't pick a lot of them ahead of Man City's players. Um, and I, would, I think that's... I just I you, will say that I would. <laughs> <laughs> I'd pick five or six. But is that because you're a Liverpool fan though or just... Partly. But <laughs> Um, I don't know. Anyway, it's a different show, isn't it? But uh, <laughs> sorry, but I know I know what you mean. I'm not like, but yeah, there's it, a spirit, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. And I just think that them together is the sum of all the parts together is better than the individuals on their own, if you know what I mean. And I think it's something that I don't think I've experienced as a Liverpool fan going to the games. Um, I've experienced good Liverpool sides, you know, when we had like Alonso, Mascherano, Gerrard in the midfield. But then you went beyond that and there wasn't, you know, we had Torres up front, but you you couldn't look at that side and go, it was full of spectacular individuals and you wouldn't turn around and say that they were a fantastic side. They had a fantastic manager who somehow got the players to work decently together. But I think that Klopp is managing to get more out of these players as a group than I think if you looked at those players on paper, you would think was humanly possible. And I think that's the one thing that I'm going to take away from this season is just how Klopp has managed to get more out of the players than what I thought was possible at the start of the season. There is that, Steve. And there is also now the the sheer sense of mission, which I think you saw last night. I think you saw it from, again, on an individual level, but also on a collective level and also on a Liverpoolian level. That's what I, I, I take from them at the minute as well. They, they, they look to me like they have a genuine sense of, of mission uh, mm. in terms of where they are, what they're about, and the challenge that sits in front of them. Yeah, completely. And it, it kind of helps. It, it It's so in focus now, that, you know, when it was sort of 16 games, 15 games or whatever, even when we were ahead, it, it it's harder to sort of quantify. You can you can you all rem- we all know the dates now, and we all know the the games and the order that they come in. Whereas if, you know probably when it was eight to go, I was a bit like, is it Cardiff and then Huddersfield? Or like now it's kind of all it's all just sharpened and everything's in sort of high definition and it's all there. And and a lot of people have said you know that this is effectively sudden death now, and it's it's City's penalty next. Um, I suppose in that situation, um, right before our right before our next game, and that shifts that a little bit of that pressure back you know I'd I'd be panicking if I was them about going to Crystal Palace um, that said you know we've, we've got every reason to 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 take Chelsea very seriously and, and you know and be be concerned about that but I don't I don't have any fear that the side are not prepared are not um, ready for what they're going to face um, they might they might get unlucky and they might, they might drop some points against Chelsea, but it won't be for lack of preparation, it won't be for lack of commitment, and it certainly won't be for lack of what you might call bottle. Um, finish it off. Uh, I am intrigued just um, about how you think it's going to go against Porto, John. It's I think we're in a mildly strange situation at the minute where obviously the focus is very much around the title, but 
Portal shouldn't be taken lightly. I know you're going to be doing a couple of shows for us uh, around this. Uh, under the lights, you've got that lined up for Monday. Portal shouldn't be taken lightly, should they? There's, there's a fair bit of creativity there. They're not the side from last season, and it is remembering that worth remembering them that in the 5 0 last season, it was pretty close to everything we hit went in. Uh, it's not going to be easy over two legs. Yeah, and they had some good chances as they well. It was, it was, it was yeah. a funny night. It was, it was lashed out. Although I think the Porto just rains, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> you know, people who, who were going over have been looking into it and it's worked out it's raining every day from now until then. Um, but yeah, it was it was a sort of a bit of a freak result in a way, although I thought we played very well as well. Um, I'm not too worried about complacency and in, in, in that I don't think the players will suffer from it. And so I think the players... It was noticeable again after the after the. I don't know why I talk, keep talking about uh, post match interviews. I think it's because I so rarely see them that, uh, <laughs> that, I'm, that I'm getting all my facts in. Uh, but they said they, you know, they were saying, "Oh yeah, now it's now it's Porto, now it's focused on Porto." And they were almost kind of like, you know, it was interesting. They said that you know their minds were on Porto, not Chelsea. Um, and I think, you know, the players are. You know, if you're a European player, you know, you want to win the league for Liverpool because, you know, how much the supporters want it and because, you know, you, you want to win league titles. But, you know, if, you, if you're Mo Salah, if you're Bobby Firmino, if, you you know, you know those, those lads want a Champions League medal. Mm-hmm. That, that's what okay. they want, you know what I mean? And, and so, you know, they're, they're playing along with us to be nice in this other thing. <laughs> but, um, but you know, that that's that's that, that's the kind of... What, what, one day after and I'm aware I said European players and then named two players away from Europe but you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean the profile of player yeah. I mean, Sal- Salah said it himself a few weeks ago didn't he that the Champions League is what I want but the, what the fans want is the Premier League and that means a lot to me as well um, it'd be, just be great to win both and I think that's yeah. all of their attitudes at the minute uh, I think they're, they're good enough to back and themselves there's no reason why not no and, but they're good enough to back themselves I think to, to win leagues um, you know another thing I think about this, this side and I probably said it in 2014 that this wasn't a one chance only thing, but it it was, and um, this this isn't. I don't think. I think this is the the beginnings of you know Liverpool consistently challenging for titles. You so much more rarely get through to um, to a Champions League final. The fact that we seem to to madly do it way more more often than um, than we have any right to um, probably skews your your view on that a little bit. But as a footballer, you know that you could go 15 seasons. The very best in your position in Europe, and not get a chance to even play in one one final, and particularly if you're Mo Salah with the history there from last season, you can completely understand why that's such a massive thing for them. And it's five days between Porto and Chelsea. I don't think there's any any major issue there. No, I think the players are going to be bang up for it, yeah. and I think that the, the players won't take Porto too lightly. And I think basically supporters, it's up to us whether we want to join the fun or not. And I would say that joining the fun is always more fun. I've got my book today off. <laughs> <laughs> if that helps them, <laughs> yeah. it's the right attitude. <laughs> In terms of joining the fun, uh, we have got our end of season party uh, lined up. Uh, that is the night before Wolves. It's the Saturday night before Wolves. You can buy tickets on Sea Tickets for it. Um, it's not going to be what we normally do at live shows, probably, uh, if we pull it together. Uh, me and John are working on something at the minute, which will be hopefully an extravaganza of celebrating a fantastic season. Yeah, it's going to be like a major laser gig, uh, I've decided, but with, but with uh, Sadio Mane scoring goals, uh, so better. <laughs> Yeah. Um, no, it's going to be good fun. Uh, TG Band are playing as well, which is which is amazing, and obviously the the the, the kind of the, maybe the most fun band in, band in Liverpool. Um, and so yeah, it'd be it's going to be a really good night. It's in Manford Hall. Uh, me and Steve Graves are going to be doing a bit of DJing earlier on as well. I don't think he's fully committed, but I'll put him on the spot now. So he asked me. <laughs> <laughs> I said yeah. <laughs> and so and so yeah, it's going to be it's 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 going to be boss, and we've sold loads of tickets already. So it's going to be kind of a boss celebration on the Saturday night, and and hopefully kind of a really fun weekend as well and if you go to theamphiobapp.com forward slash tour live uh, that'll link you through to see tickets to buy them excellent stuff uh, thank you very much to Philip. thank you very much to John thank you very much to Steve that has been the Anfield Rap in association with Reds Bet whatever you're doing this weekend enjoy it because we can now we've done our bit <laughs>